All right, that looks good. Let's go uh, check on the models. We've got a pretty fun shoot scheduled today. We're going to be doing some fog, some haze, a couple different atmospheric effects. And we will check on the girls. And it's a goth shoot, too. Hello, my name is Brian with Photo Persuasion, and today we are doing a fog and haze shoot. I'd like to introduce the models for today. We have Lucille. Alice Ives, and Violet Lavender. And today we're gonna to be doing some haze shots with some different gels. We're gonna be doing, uh, showing like the best way to light that, some different effects that you can do. And then we're also gonna do something a little bit different since this is more of a gothic themed shoot, we wanna have some gothic type fog. There are some issues with your standard haze machine if you're going for a certain effect. Like you can go all around the room, you have trouble controlling it. So we've got a special build going on today in order to show a different way to use your standard haze machine. All right, so today we're doing the fog shoot, and I want to show you, this is just a standard hazer. I purchased this at a, at a Halloween store when the sales were going on, and I really enjoy working with it. As you can see, with just this shot, it comes out at a low angle, it diffuses, it's really hard to control, but you do get some really good shots with it. So we're just gonna take a quick test shot. Take one more, eyes right on me, perfect. Gorgeous. What I'm seeing on this on the screen is that the fog is all low. It's not, uh, it's really reflecting the light. We have some blue gels that are, that are shooting through the fog to make it stand out, but it's all around their waist. It's not, uh, it's not giving that area effect that I want. So Alice, if I could have your help, please. Um, I'm gonna have you just uh, hold that and move it up and down. So we're cheating here and just uh, getting the fog in a little bit area, a little, little larger area. Nice. All right, Alice, why don't you jump in there as well? Perfect. Nice, eyes right on me. And we're all looking at Lav. And these look great. I, I love how these look. The blue gels are really highlighting the, the fog, but as you can see, it's already dispersing through the room. And for a gothic shoot, we want to keep the fog down on the ground which is why we've um, built a fog chiller for this shoot. All right, so we wanted the fog to be low to the ground. And so for that, we created this fog chiller. And the different components are, start with just your standard fog machine. You can get it at any party city. And you want it a little bit just separate from your intake tube because it allows the oxygen and the air to get into the fog as it's vaporizing in order to create that thick fog. So this is a four inch PVC pipe and we drill a hole into the igloo, standard igloo container, cooler. Uh, intake's there, so the fog will come in through here. And in the cooler, there's an elbow joint here, so the fog will come up through here, stop because the lid will be closed, obviously. It'll go through the ice. We have a foam core grid that we made just by pushing holes through, this is about a, a foot by 16 inch foam core grid to fit in there at an angle. Fog will come up, go through the ice, chilling it, and through this outtake, where it will go to the ground because it's then heavier than air. For example, so already you see that that's falling, and you see how quickly it works as well. Let's see what happens with the fog. Wow, that is looking really good. All right, eyes right on me. One more time. We have the low line fog on the bottom. Then it, uh, because it is a hazer and we're using ice rather than uh, um, dry ice, you still get that effects in the background. I am, I am loving how these images are looking. All right, well, since we have the chiller, we want to do something where the fog is down the ground. And so for that, we have our model, Lucille, laying on the ground, and we're going to turn the fog machine on and have the fog swirling around her so it kind of looks like she's coming up out of the cemetery and should make the floor disappear a little bit here. Perfect. And face over here just slightly. And then bring this arm up just slightly. 
Actually, bring the arm down where you had it now. And then bend the elbow out. Perfect. And then reach out with your sternum like you're coming towards me. Nice. And actually, hold that. I want to try something at a different angle now that I see this. Turn the head. Right there. Nice. Hold that. And then bring that arm down, the far arm down, um, away from you. There it goes, right there. Just hold that. Nice. And relax. Let's take a look at how that looks. And none of those worked. That's the thing, not every shot is going to work, especially when you're trying something new. But it wasn't quite what I was going for the first time. But that's okay. Don't use any of that. All right, so for this shot, we have Lucille sitting down and we have the light directly above her. And this is a strip light with a grid. So this is going to focus the light directly onto her face and not spread too much onto the background or the foreground. Then I have two lights in the back with red gels and this is going to be used to illuminate her for some rim lighting as well as the fog. Chin up. All right, and relax. That looks really good. We had the fog across the ground and then um, with this, it's still vaporizing up a little bit, but that just adds to the effect. This really looks like you're gonna go to hell. All right, so for this shot, we wanna to try to have the fog like enveloping her from behind and give her that really sinister gothic look. So we are going to see if this works out. We have our key light again, the same strip light with the grid, and we still have our red backlights because they worked really well in the last shot. So let's see how this, how this turns out. Hold that. Lean forward just a little more towards me. Perfect, right there. Nice, hold that. Nice, and relax. Then give me like a little, uh, little hands up. Actually, I like that, do that again and keep the fog kind of going and wait for me though. All right, and go. Nice, and eyes right at me when you do that. Perfect, one more time. Nice, and relax. And then uh, we're gonna turn the fog machine or the wind machine on. And I still can't see anything. Nice. So good, we got some, some ground effects there. If I was to redo this shot, I'd probably put a little more red um, on the front because once that fog gets in front of you, it loses the color and just takes on the white. These still look really good. Overall, I deem this a success. We got the, the chiller to work as putting out low-lying fog. Um, I think definitely some, some dry ice would help with keeping the fog um, chilled and, and along the ground longer without it dispersing into the air. And the photos turn amazing. The haze takes the light very well. Um, it's definitely something that we would keep for future shoots. All right, so we just wrapped up the shoot and had a great time working with some different atmospheric effects. Uh, we saw the difference between the low-lying fog and the fog when it comes directly out of the machine. Um, saw how the gels could interact with that to illuminate the scene. I want to do a big thank you to my models today. We have uh, Alice Ives, Lucille, and Violet Lavender. And I'm Brian with Photo Persuasion. Uh, feel free to check any of us out, uh, Photo Persuasion on Instagram or photopersuasion.com. And look forward to seeing you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.